parc la fontaine, les filles s'en vont et s'y promènent aux bras des garçons qui les entraînent au cœur des buissons où elles étreignent l'amour en saison qui les enchaîne dans un tourbillon. Yo, what is going on, y'all? It is your boy, Classic Craig, or Craig's Classes. However y'all see it, just don't forget that my name is Craig, and we are back with another brand new game, man. This one is new to me. Some of y'all might have seen it played already, but it's new to me. I never touched this game. I just found out about it. So, brand new to me brand new to the channel but this game is called this bid we made now i have no idea 100 what the game about all i know is that we work in a hotel and we being nosy and we uncover some stuff that we shouldn't uncover so let's uncover this stuff together if i if i find the secrets out y'all know the secrets too bro so if something happened to me it's happening to all y'all if you're excited for the video make sure you show us some love by leaving a like down below if you haven't go ahead and hit that red subscribe button to become a classic today and yeah man without further ado let's go ahead and boot up this game this bid we made not just me we made this bid, so y'all, y'all land too, bro. This game takes account of all of your actions, including the ones you decide not to take. These choices will determine your fate in the face of others around you. Proceed with caution. Mm, okay, I like that. I like that intro right there, boss. Service de police, Post 22, Montreal. Okay, it looked like we in Canada. Yeah, we had the interview room. Okay. And my name's Sophie. Okay. 21? You work at the Clarison. Husband? Over I'm sorry? Are you married? No, not yet. I live with my mother. She's sick, so I have to take care of her. No father? No, it's always just been me and my mom. All right, Miss Roy. I need you to tell me everything that happened, starting with this morning. You to be 21 again? I can relate, but I can't because I'm on my last year in my 20s, so. Okay, 38? Oh, okay, stitches. It's not bad, bro. It's still young. This bed we made, y'all. Okay. Game look crispy, though. Oh, we here. We... A bit of tidying up, and then we can go on break. Okay, the pillow right here. This bed we made, y'all. Let me make this bed. Uh, pristine. Pristine. Place that pillow. Nice. That bag up. Oh, we can call. We can call somebody. Hmm. Only men's wear. Are you in town for a business trip, maybe? Look at her already being nosy. Let me read this. A lot of money to owe. You know me. You know my family. You've had a seat at our bar since the day we opened in '49. You're more than a friend to us. You're practically family. And while friends are polite to each other, family deserves more. Family deserves honesty. As such, I want to be as direct as possible in letting you know that you're down to your last chance. The $8,380 you owe us plus 25% interest is now eight months overdue. My patient has worn thin. This isn't like one of your unpaid bar tabs. You came to us for help and help always comes at a price. We've opened our pockets to you time and time again. And all you've done is taken advantage of our goodwill and generosity. We'll come over in person to make our collection tomorrow. I'll be bringing along the boys so we can all sit down and have a little chat. But just so you know, they aren't good with words. Oh my gosh, that's a crazy threat. He gotta be Italian, bro. He gotta be Italian. Date of initial loan, January 2nd. All right, let me just switch it like this. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Mapleston, regretful as we are to have to resort to these lines of communication, our client and your neighbor, the owner of 88 32nd Street, has been ultimately evasive of our many attempts to reach out and collect our due debts. Specifically, an amount owed to us in the sum of $1,904.75. He has given us little recourse, but to contact him through those in close physical proximity to him in hopes that they can deliver a message on our... Bro, do you know how pissed I would be if my neighbor owed some money and the debt collector sent me a letter and was like, bro, can you walk to your neighbor house? I don't like bro if you can't reach him you can't reach him bro you got to do what you got to do i can't force that man to pay you your bread back like you just gonna have to figure it out some other way don't ask me to get involved like i'm just a neighbor bro i only talk to dude like talking about it. i wave we have little desire to disturb you and the other fine citizen of 32nd street but our business may bring us back to your neighborhood if it is not quickly re well i guess ours aren't quite as complimentary oops i scrolled up too much my bad so so far it seemed like this dude in this uh, room voila. good as new 
All right, still can't clean that. It seemed like the dude in this in this room, the stand in this room, he gotta be some sort of mafia guy. Look, look at the safe. Please clean this room. Do not disturb. I'm trying to make sure I put everything back the way it's supposed to be, y'all. Okay, bathroom closed. I think we good. I think we cleaned up everything we were supposed to clean up. Good enough, okay. I'm with that. Everything spotless? I think we good. I think we cleaned it up enough. Nitri, you said, well, my bad, bro. I just saw your message. You said, what is the point of this game if you don't mind me asking? So we, we work at a hotel um, as a maid, as you can see, but we kind of snooping in the guest rooms, just trying to uncover stuff about their life. And then I guess we find some stuff we're not supposed to find. And uh, the story unfolds from there. That's pretty much all I know, how the story unfolds or what happens. I'm not 100% sure. So that's what we're going to find out. Look at her. Always glued to that gossip magazine. Do you think she has any... Like murder mystery, yeah, 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 yeah. Gracie Joan in Maryland. Well, when your own wife is that dull, you need to get your excitement somewhere. <laughs> Look at them talking junk about me, bro. Those other maids are catty. That's what I'm saying, bro. Kill them. Sophie speaking. <laughs> hey, do you think you could come up real quick? Um, sure. I'll be right there. On oh, weed nature said, bro, why is she hot? I mean, hey man, you know, she Montrealian. Why not the key on the table? What is this? Oh, this rose petals. Hey there. So, who's sleeping? Sleep what? You were whispering just now on the phone. So I thought maybe Eugene or Bobby were napping in the break room again. Oh, yeah, no. It's Jacques and Wendy. They were um in the middle of something. Mm. Ugh, it's so awkward when in the you middle start of... making out like no one's watching. Get a room. We literally work in a hotel. They, get, they weren't kissing. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we got to choose dialogue. Okay. Uh, it's so awkward when they start making out like no one's watching. Get a room. We literally work in a hotel. I'm going to say that. I'm going to be honest about them. Because they talking junk about me. So I don't want to be like saying lies. And then they end up going back and then coming out saying that I was lying. And now they're going to talk even more junk about me. So let's say they weren't kissing. They weren't kissing this time. They were fighting. Oh, this is entertaining. Oh, I mean, she's talking about the people in the room, not the two girls that were talking about me. I'm not completely sure, but it sounded like Linda had something to do with it. Ugh, that bitch. Mm. Beth. Trust me, she deserves it. Why does everyone hate Linda? That's it for today's scoops. Jack is to blame. Why does everyone I don't hate Linda? Get why everyone hates her so much. Linda's always nice to me. To you, maybe, but she's just the worst to every girl she perceives as a threat. Mm. A threat? A threat to what? I don't know. Her place as Bernard's right hand, I suppose. So you're saying I'm not a threat? I'm not saying that. I'm saying Linda thinks that, but that's her mistake. I know there's more to you than meets the eye. Oh, <laughs> thanks. So, um, you said you needed me? My help, I mean. Oh, right. Want to guess why? Did you see him out with something to clean? I'm guessing there's something I have to clean. Obviously, but what is it? She wanted to clean a ball. Uh, did a kid throw up again? God, no. Did that happen recently? Yeah, last week. While I was cleaning some of it, got... uh, I'm gonna Yeah, that's nasty, right bro. There. That's nasty, Keep bro. Keep talking and you'll be cleaning up after me, too. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, no, you'll be glad to know it's nothing gross this time. A nice gentleman decided it was time to redesign the lobby and helped us by knocking over that vase on his way out of the hotel. That's it? I would do it myself, but the last time I tried to leave the front desk, Bernard emerged from his lair to scold me about procedures and whatnot. Well, we can't have the beauty of the crime. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, bro. I got you, I got you. The throne, can we? Oh, the people would riot. Bernard especially. <laughs> Bernard's hardly the people. Okay, so I gotta get a mop and we got a journal. Okay, so we got a journal. I can press E to open up Sophie's journal and then I can press Q to hear her thoughts. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, shock. Linda, Wendy's great at her job. Guests absolutely love her and huh, not just guests, apparently. Oh god damn it, Linda. I only like her because guests like her. Making sure guests are happy is my job, after all. Look at me being nosy. Care whether I'm happy. If Wendy wasn't doing her job, that'd be another story. But I can't just fire her without just stirring up trouble among the staff. Would that be a good reason? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, <laughs> Andrew. Hi. I, I was. I mean, I'm sorry. I was just. 
spying on yeah bro manager? andrew caught you no i i heard something and i hey 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 it's okay i'm just pulling your leg i'm i'm sorry i scared you i'm just i i'm not used to having people around me while i work yeah you're always working alone up there aren't you i actually think it's the first time i've seen you down in the lobby don't tell me you've been sent to clean up after the valentine's day ball. no sir they don't got me doing that i heard it was a disaster ashley beth called me here were we, were you there during the ball i'm gonna go with ashley beth no, called me here beth called me a guest knocked over a vase and made a mess in the lobby yeah i saw that catastrophe happen just what we need huh well i'd rather be doing that than cleaning the reception hall with nicole yeah I don't even want to see the state of the place after this weekend. I know chocolate fountains are for dipping, but I didn't expect to find someone's shoe in there. Mm, in, the, in the chocolate fountain? <laughs> no idea. You must see plenty of weird stuff too, right? Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you found in a guest room? Oh, you give me an option? Something... What are we saying? Something very odd? Something gross? Something about you? Oh, shoot. Okay, well, we feeling Andrew? Y'all think he trustworthy? I don't know just yet. Bro seemed like he might like us. He said he found a shoe inside some chocolate. Let me say, let me say something odd that kind of matches, kind of matches vibe. A few months ago, I found stacks of pennies in a room's toilet. Like, a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> what? And when I got to the bed, the pillowcases were filled with pennies as well. I'm still not sure if that guest simply had a strange way of leaving a tip. Nice, nice. Maybe it was a penny robbery oh i uh bro name already suspicious i wouldn't trust him hell here with the snowstorm it's okay i need to um yeah, yeah all right i think they got a Take little care. something i think they got a little something nitrix you seen what we did in that man room we was cleaning up we was looking through bro suitcase reading his documents about his depth uh 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 checking his safe like everything bro even if it's only a best banter, even if it's only a few minutes out of my day, my chats with Beth are always a highlight. She called me up to clean a mess made by one of our guests, which gave us the chance to catch up. I don't think I've met someone who can make conversations seem so effortless. Beth has a witty response for everything. It's too bad maids aren't usually allowed in the lobby. Chatting with her every day would be a great way to start my morning. And then this is Andrew that just happened. So this is just stuff that happened like recently. And we, I guess, documented down in our journal. Andrew's ambush. Oops. So Andrew caught me eavesdropping on Bernard and Linda, who was once again complaining about Wendy. Thankfully, he didn't make a big deal out of it. He doesn't seem the, the kind of judge. He's actually quite nice. Easy to talk to, fun to tease, and funny in his own quiet way. I hope I get a chance to talk to him more. I get the sense that there's a lot more to him that he willingly shows. I told you I think she liked, bro. Ew, I better throw that away. What is this? Is this just supposed, supposed to be a napkin? Film roll. See? Guess must have dropped it when he knocked over the vase. Probably should return it to him. She's saying that, but y'all know what she really want to do. We really want to inspect that. Pick, pick that up, throw that away. Now I just put the leaves back in the vase and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Nice, nice. I understand, Mr. Ramsey. I wish I could make the snowstorm disappear. I really do. But sadly, that's not within my power. Beth, who knocked over that vase? Mr. Spade. Mr. Spade? Well, I can check with the airport and let you know when flights resume. Until then, yes, yes, I know. You've said that already. So, which room are you staying in, Mr. Spade? I like, I like, I like being nosy when it's my job to be nosy. I don't like just be nosy just to be nosy. But like when the, when the gameplay involved being stealthy and like just learning shit, like I love that, bro. So yeah, this 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 the, this the one right here. Well, for that, um, Mr. Spade, we're looking for Mr. Spade, y'all. First, I suggest finding Sullivan. a little corner. Price. Right? Kneel down, all right? Then you clap spade, your spade, spade, spade. Room five oh five. Return that film roll without going out of my way. So yeah, y'all, we we are made. Tell me, we are made working at a hotel, and we just when we go into these guest rooms or like interact with these guests. We learn a little bit about them and then we, we we try to go above and beyond to learn more all right while cleaning up this mess in the lobby i found a roll of film on the ground i'm guessing whoever knocked over the vase must have dropped it with best help maybe i can figure out who it belongs to and return it to their room we usually keep lost items at the front desk but bringing it back myself would only take a few minutes out of my day it might put me a few steps closer to employee of the month off to room 505 okay i should go to the fifth floor to return mr spade's film roll all right, y'all. Room 505. We're heading to room 505. Hold it, please. <sighs> Look at Andrew. I told y'all Andrew like her, bro. Phew. Made it. Thanks. 
You're welcome. Was it you who cleaned the puddle by the restrooms? Was I not supposed to? Well, Eugene asked us not to touch anything until he's repaired the leak, but it's probably safer this way. Someone could have slipped on it. Which floor? Oh, uh, sixth. Okay, got a trophy for that. I'm going out my way to clean What's shit. What's the big rush? I need to bring this to our VIP guest. The one who rented the entire floor. Mmm, oh, baller. Is it that British man I keep hearing about? All the girls complaining. Isn't he famous? He's sort of a celebrity, isn't he? He sure acts like one. I wouldn't want to be that poor assistant he keeps shouting at. I wish I was assigned to clean his room. Can you imagine the weird things I'd find? Look at her already be talking about being nosy. For. I wouldn't be surprised if the man kept a few skeletons in his closet. Can't you tell me who he is? I've never actually met him. I always talk to his assistant. Only Bernard knows his identity. Um. I do have a suspicion, though. You say Andrew is definitely gonna make a but move? I'm, I'm not sure I should say it. Most likely. Can't you at least give me a hint? Okay, let me think. Oh, look at my floor. Saved by the bell. Hey, come on. Don't leave me hanging. Let's just say I like to prolong the suspense. Is that the hint? Hmm, who knows? <laughs> Fair enough. Have fun up there. You too. Okay, Andrew. That was kind of smooth, Andrew. That was kind of smooth, Andrew. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Oh, look. Room 505 and the door is cracked, y'all. What's in here? What's in here? Y'all y'all claiming. I'm claiming somebody in here dead, bro. That's my thought. We're gonna open the door. Somebody gonna be in here dead. Mr. Spade or somebody Mr. Spade killed. Let's see. Mr. Spade. Okay, Mr. okay. Mr. Spade? Maybe not. He definitely left in a hurry, though. You got hella film in here, too. You got a development room. You're right. God damn. It's me. It's pictures of me. Tampering with objects may lead to a positive or negative consequence. Hold on, bro. He has pictures of me in here. Is that me? That's me, right? Bro, I think he has pictures of me right there, bro. This is crazy. You said, what if he tried to put a camera in the plant, but someone knocked it over, but he tried to record everything? Well, he did. It's just the film roll. So I don't think he tried to put a whole camera in there, but also Beth saw that it was him that knocked over the plant. So maybe he was, it looked like his room is in a mess. So he probably was rushing out of his room and probably not the, the plant over while he was rushing out the door when he left his room. So we gotta see why he got these pictures. That's definitely me, bro. Is he taking pictures of me using people, um, perfume? Why does she look so young in, in the pictures? Probably cause he been here for a while or it might just be the art style. I don't know if I should throw it away. Okay, let me look around a little bit more and then I'll see if we gonna, oh no, no. I ain't mean to clean his bathroom, bro. See, bro, let me call, let me call. Who should we call? Beth or Andrew? Beth or Andrew? I'm gonna call Andrew, I'm gonna call Andrew. Cause Beth, she, she cool, but she not cool, cool. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. What can I do for you on this very fine day? Oh my gosh. Okay, 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 okay. Y'all got an ad break. I'm gonna wait for the ad break to end. I need some help, but who do we want to call? Who do we want to call? Beth, I need your help. I need Andrew's help. Andrew cool, but then, but then if I tell Andrew that I was uh, snitching, yeah, I can't call the police because I'm the one that he caught being nosy, exactly. But I'm trying to see which guest would be the best person to talk to. If I tell Beth, she gonna, she gonna probably in, embrace the gossip. But if I tell Andrew that he got pictures of me, Andrew might be on the defensive side because Andrew liked me. So I don't know, bro, this is, di <sighs> this is tough. Who we, who we thinking, y'all? Who we thinking? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask y'all. I'm gonna ask for y'all opinion. Should we get Beth from the front desk or should we get our guy Andrew? Who should we talk to? Yeah, you, you, somebody was taking pictures of you, but then you work at a hotel and you going through people's stuff. So maybe he wanted to have proof that you was going through his stuff. So now you in trouble. You call the police, but we, we on your ass now. Cause why you stupid through the guest stuff? Let's call Beth. Let's call Beth. Let's call Beth. Let's call Beth. Good call. Good call. Good call. I need your help. Sophie, what's going on? I, I think Mr. Spade's stalking me while I work. Really? I knew it. You did? I mean, I knew there was something fishy about him. He just has creep written all over his face, you know? How did you find out? I found a dark room. He caught me snooping. I didn't care if there were cams in 1957. It is the 60s. That's true. I, I 
found them hanging over the bathtub. Set up a kind of dark room. Pictures of you? Doing what? Um, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but sometimes when I clean the rooms, I get a little curious and, um, you know, snoop through our guest stuff. Sneaky. And Mr. Spade caught you in the act, I suppose? Be Beth cool yes. about it. Beth cool about I it. I think... I think we should call the police. No, that's a terrible idea. But Sophie, that man has pictures of you running your hands through people's stuff. But that's I what didn't we see anything. I was just snooping, I swear. I know, I know, but say a client reports something missing, those pictures would put a big red target on your back. Exactly what I was saying. That's exactly what I was saying, bro. I'm no photographer, but I've been in one of those dark rooms before. You have? Yeah, I modeled for a while. Okay, Beth, talk to me. What, anyway, I'm, what I'm supposed to do? What I'm getting at is... Those pictures were developed recently, but it doesn't mean there aren't more elsewhere. Mm-hmm. There is a safe here. Well, I didn't look through the entire room, but there is a safe here. I bet you anything there'll be more pictures in there. Do you have the safe combination then? I'm pretty sure it's locked. Give me a minute. Let's go, Beth. We made the right call, y'all. Calling Beth was the right one. Andrew would have been too goody good to shoot. He would have told me to call the police or something like that. Like Belda, those idiots. What? I can't find the combination list. The night staff's probably lost it again anyway we always ask that clients write down their code somewhere so they don't have to call reception a dozen times maybe you can have a look around the room and i call you if mr creep comes back you know so you can get out of there in time okay okay yeah let's lock in let's lock in we gotta find this code y'all we gotta find oh, this code oh and beth please keep this between us of course that's a dictionary can i open it up oh pawning off your possessions what do you need the money for? Girl, we not worried about that. We trying to see what his code is. Okay, he pawned something right there. What the fuck? Nah, what buddy got going on? Y'all see he got scam? <laughs> Instead of spam on the, on, the, on the counter right here. Okay, what's this? I remember this sale. I picked up that new winter jacket for mom. Why Harry's? Lots of burger places closer to the hotel. Beaver Lake? Oh, they're the cold. That's where I took mom's skating last month. That's the cold right there. Here. That's the cold. 28. Is that a 52? 28, 52, 2, 25? 28, 52, 225. Okay, let me keep looking though. The lake. Special occasion, wedding, funeral. Just visited the oratory for the first time in years. Okay, yeah, he's stalking this me. It has to be a coincidence, right? Is that your real name? Dear Mr. Why Morgan. Did you check in under Mr. Spade. Maybe there are coordinates? Oh, you might be right, bro. I might gotta put it together on the map. You have to stop writing to this address. Lindsay died two years ago. I do not know what happened between the two of you, but please let us grieve in peace. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay. You might be right, bro. So he said 28. Can I can I zoom in on this? I can't see like if, it, if it's pointing to one of the numbers. We, he was at the 98th infantry oh no the 99th infantry the year of the discharge hospital discharge was 1944 i think and then my address or Lindsay's address it's the letter he wrote to, to Lindsay. there it is etta franklin 34 somner street so 34 Lindsay address okay y'all hold on hold on hold on hold on and then he had the letter in here for his job hey weirdo stop wasting my time i'm not hiring you ever mr Morgan. you know i have a respect for what you've done to other but i'm not sure that i didn't receive the past three months meant rent before the end of the week damn it bro okay when did he get released that's harry's diner t30 okay this him paul 42 Put that key back oh beth calling me y'all beth calling me shit beth calling me is he here he what no beth you said you'd call if mr spade was coming back to his room oh yeah i did say that sorry for the fright Oh my God, Beth, I nearly had a heart attack when I heard the phone ring. I didn't mean for it. I was just so caught up in the thrill of it all. I had to check in. Did you find more pictures of you? But I think I have enough leads to open the safe now. I'm impressed. Well done, Arsène Lupin. What? Oh, uh, never mind. Don't let me keep you. Okay, I'll call you back. Yeah, you better. I, I won't call again unless Mr. Spade returns. For real this time. All right, thanks. You said, but from 1915 is four numbers. We're just going to use the last two for the year. 
We in there. Let's go. Bro got a pistol. Hold on. Okay, Sophie, you should probably put this down. Now. You about to throw away all the film. And H. Who are they? M and H. Are they guests here? Okay, 12.30 a.m. Arrived at the hotel. Room not ready yet. Had to wait in the lobby. M and H came in, both nicely dressed. M was holding a flower bouquet. Heard them talking to the receptionist, saying how nice the oratory was. Picks up some flyers to find out what the oratory they were talking about. Room finally ready. No sign of M or H. Decided to unpack and install my setup in the bathroom. Still no sign of M and H. Have probably gone out again. Finished developing this afternoon's pictures. Unable to sleep. Heard weird noises from the corridor. No idea what it was. You're and going through their trash? really want to find out what M and H are up to, don't you? M and H arrived at the hotel restaurant and ate a quick breakfast. M and H left the hotel to get into a taxi, tried to follow, but had no money for a cab. Found a pawn shop to get some money, but had no idea where M and H went. Back in my room, we'll have to find, we'll have to kill time until M and H, M &H return. Spotted M and H entering the hotel with Weston shopping bags. Found M and H eating at the hotel restaurant. H left for the bathroom. M exchanged a few words with a woman and her child. M and H left the restaurant, probably turning in for the night while leaving. H emptied his pockets in the trash, searched the trash, found a receipt from a place called Harry's Diner with drawings and weird symbols on it. Took a coffee to Harry's Diner. What did he used to be? Oh, I gotta scroll. So many questions. Used to be a regular about 10 years ago, back in my room, trying mopping, mapping M and H movements since their arrival in Montreal. Unable to sleep again, heard some exciting. Someone exiting room 507, but now heard the elevator. M and H arrived at the hotel for breakfast. Left the hotel, got into a taxi, followed up to a place called Mount Royal. M and H went skating on a small frozen lake, fell on the ice while trying to take a picture. H might have seen me. M and H ate at the lounge and left a ticket on the table. Ticket has weird symbols on it, just like Harry's diner receipt. M and H decided to leave because of the snowstorm. M and H returned to the hotel shortly after me. He looked angry. Something happened during the taxi ride, but what? No sign of M and H since early afternoon. Tonight we're trying to figure out who's sneaking out at night. Okay. This looks like Beaver Lake. It's me. <laughs> she called bro Tintin. Sorry about that. So, found anything on Mr. Spade? Well, Mr. Spade isn't even his real name. What? What is it then? Paul Morgan. If I, do, I can see why he changed it. So, did you open the safe? What was in it? A journal. His journal? Does he say why he's stalking you? No, but it seems he's stalking two other people as well. Oh, who are they? They're guests. I don't know their names though. I, I was hoping you could find them in the logbook. Well, Snoopy, although it may seem like it, I'm not actually clairvoyant, so I'll need something to narrow the search. Do you know anything about them? I found a transfer request to 507. Mr. Morgan refers to them as H and M. Well, that could mean a lot of things. It could be their initials or husband and mistress. Mm. From what I can gather, it seems they're together. Okay, so they must be staying in the same room. Do we have a lot of couples at the moment? Uh, well, yes. It was Valentine's Day last Friday, remember? Oh. Oh, indeed. Hmm, would you look at that. There's a couple staying in room 509. Hector and Marcella Cruz. Hector and Marcella. H and M. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, what do we know about the cruises? Do you know anything about the cruises? Well, I saw them come in and out of the hotel a few times. Called a taxi for them once. The missus does the smiling and the other frowns a lot. Nothing to write home about. Do you have room 509 on your to-do list by any chance? I do, actually. Then maybe you go clean it and have a little look-see? Yeah, nothing unusual here. Just... A maid cleaning a room. That's my girl. I'll call you if I find anything. Okay. okay. Hector right. and Marcella. I promise. Cruise. I didn't throw away the pictures, y'all. I should have though. It didn't give me the option stitches. I was gonna do that next. Okay, that's 507. I wonder if I can go back into 505 now. I should probably check the break room. Bro, they just turned into men in black facts. <laughs> Uncle room, break room right here. Cute. It's locked. I guess.
guess I'll have to get Linda's master key instead. I don't know why I went in that room. What does that say? Hypocrite bitch. What the hell? Are they talking about me? Or are they, oh, they talking about Linda. What did Linda do? And to whom? Linda, my wife will be at her parents tonight. So come by my house at 8 p.m. And make sure you bring the new lingerie I bought you. B. Why would he write that? Okay, 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 okay. If I clean this up, because it says tampering evidence could be positive or negative. So should I clean up her door? Because who was talking about? Jocks, right? It was Jocks saying that like Linda loves him or something like that. Bro, like I hate that it give you so much choices because I don't know what I should do. Do I clean this shit up? Who is Linda? Do we, do we? Nah, fuck Linda. Let this stay. I don't even know who Linda is. Let me see. Let me go back. Thank goodness Linda keeps the master key in the locker room in case of any of us ever misplaces our own sack. Now in locker room 509, I finally find some answers in there. I retrieve and I found the worst hypocrite bitch written in red lipstick on Linda's door. There's a recipe for drama if I've ever seen one. I wonder who's behind it. She was the lady talking to, talking, oh, in the room about Wendy, the gossiper? Oh yeah, nah, fuck that, we, we not about to clean that. We ain't about to clean that. Let me see. Linda is the Clarington governess, Bernard's second in command. And it's easy to see why she rules over the maze with an iron fist, always ready to enforce Bernard's latest rule to the letter. Most of them hate for her for this, but my feelings are a bit more mixed. For whatever reason, she seems to have a soft spot for me. Hold on y'all, hold on y'all, look, look, look. I'm glad I read this. She seems to have a soft spot for me. The same cannot be said for Wendy. So Wendy is the mean one. Wendy is the mean one. So Linda is cool. So we're going to clean this up. The same cannot be said for Wendy, unfortunately. It's like she's made it her life mission to break up Wendy and Jock's relationship. I'm worried that her latest efforts may have succeeded. Linda feels incredibly strong about married couples and who chooses to divorce. She's been leaving anti-divorce flyers on every floor and won't even speak to any divorcee staying at the hotel like poor mrs beaumont in room 507 where do such strong conventions like that come from it's a little hypocritical to say the least linda's always worked closely with bernard but we've all known their relationship goes be we've all known their relationship goes beyond just co-workers their relationship has been strained lately and it does seem like the source of that strain is poor wendy bernard might be willing to bend over backwards for linda but firing the hotel's most popular waitress just because she demands it i'm not sure he'll bend that far okay so no, 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 Nitrix. So a guest didn't write this, bro. I think Wendy wrote this on Linda's door. I think. Let me check. Gov governess. Yeah. So, so Wendy wrote this on Linda's door. And she also could have typed the note too. Oh, Wendy look cool though. Wendy is the waitress at the hotel restaurant. She and her best friend Yvette were hired together and they used to be inseparable until three or four months ago. It's no coincidence who's B though? Who's Bernard? We about to see, we about to see. It's no coincidence that this was around the time Wendy started dating Jocks, the bellboy, to whom she's now happily engaged. That is dependent on who you ask. Linda seems to think that Wendy is the Clarington's first residence flirt. Sure, she's popular with the guests and collects the most tips by far, but I've always chopped that up to the same thing that has drawn me to her, that warm smile that just radiates kindness. Linda's not convinced, though, and seems to have taken it upon herself to expose Wendy for who she really is. So Linda could have did this to set it up. Oh, man, we might got to clean this up, y'all. This is Bernard. Yeah, this is Bernard. This is Bernard. Bernard is Clarence's manager, the big boss. He spends most of his days locked in his office and doesn't like the maids roaming around outside their posts, so our paths don't cross too often. Lately, he's been hell-bent on getting the hotel back in shape, whatever that means, and there have been a lot of changes around here as a result. He's, forcing, he's enforcing employees' rules such as, wait, he's enforcing employee rules more strictly than ever and dropping God knows how much money on renovations. The stress is practically radiating off of him. Bernard and Linda are quite close, She's a second in command, but it's an open secret that there's more going on. They've been arguing more and more lately, though, usually about Linda's strong feelings about Wendy. Bernard loves Wendy, or more accurately loves how much the guests love her, while Linda thinks she's up to no good. Wendy's not a guest. No, Wendy is a, a waitress. Wendy is a waitress. Linda is the governess, or the second in command, and Bernard is the boss. I'm gonna clean it up, because this is what I think is happening. 
I think Wendy, I mean, no, not Wendy. I think Linda did this as a self -sab uh, uh, sabotage. Check it out. Bro, if I click up on my screen, if I click up on my screen one more time, bro. Okay, look. This says, Linda, my wife will be at her parents' house tonight, so come by my house at 8 p.m. and make sure you bring the new lingerie I bought you. B. We know he not gonna do this, bruh. We know he not gonna do this because he know the maids come to her office. So we know B not gonna write that letter and place it on the door. And then, hypocrite bitch. Wendy could have really wrote that, but who knows? I'm gonna clean it up. Cause I think Linda did this herself, trying to expose Wendy to get her fired. But Wendy is really nice, according to our, our journal. So I'm gonna clean this up. And I'm gonna throw this away. All right. And let's go. Let's go to room 509. What was that? I should be able to open 509 now. Now, hopefully that was a good, that was a good decision. Hey, you. Oh, oh it's Beth. Hey, okay, Beth. cool. On break already? Sadly, no. I have an express delivery to make to the sixth floor. Isn't that Jack or Andrew's job? Well, they're both busy, so what about you? I thought you'd be in 509. I'm heading up now. I just had to grab Linda's master key before I could continue our investigation. Oh, I see. Well, this has been quite the day so far, hasn't it? I can't remember the last time work was this interesting. Yeah, that's definitely one way to put it. That's not all, though. While I was looking for my keys, I found some graffiti on Linda's door. What kind of graffiti are we talking about? I didn't even about? realize somebody was in the bathroom Words, crying. A hypocrite bitch in red lipstick. <laughs> I wonder who could have written it. If I had to bet, I'd put my money on Wendy. Linda's been treating her like her personal punching bag as of late. Linda's been too harsh. And Bernard hears about this. Hmm. Bernard's already on his last nerve today. If he catches wind of more drama between Linda and Wendy, the stress might kill him. Huh. And I can only hope I'll have a front row seat when that happens. I don't know the first thing about running a hotel, but the amount of pressure he must be under, I don't think any good would come from adding to that. Hmm. I guess not. You know, I don't know how you do it, Sophie. Maybe it's because my empathy only goes so far, but... I admire that you're able to feel for just about anyone. Mm. I feel for some more. Ooh, this is a love? We can we can we can confess our love to Beth. Hold on, bro. Hold on. I'm assuming that's what this means. I feel more for some than others. I'm gonna say it. I like to put myself in other people's shoes. Especially if there are people I find fascinating, like you. <laughs> wow, the way you turned that compliment right back around at me was masterful. <laughs> well, this was a lovely chat, but I better see if Eugene is around maintenance. Hopefully he can help me find this thing for our esteemed guest. Yeah, we both got a lot on our plates today. I can't wait to find out more about our friends H&M. Take care. You too. Okay. Now I did have a prompt about somebody crying in the um, bathroom. So let me see if I can go see who that was. Stay a bit longer. Let me go see who was crying in the bathroom. I didn't even realize that. What is it? Wendy? It's Sophie. Are you all right? Do I sound all right? I... No, I guess not. 
Just leave me alone. I don't want to. I cleaned it, y'all. It, it might have been true. Okay, okay. I overheard you and Jocks or earlier, or who wrote on Linda's door? I'm gonna go with I overheard you and Jocks earlier. You said how much was this game? Cause it's fire. It was 25, bro. 24.99. I was in the break room earlier, and um, I couldn't help but overhear your argument with Shock. I'm sorry he let Linda get to his head. He, he should be trusting you, not her. Yeah. Well. I know I wouldn't be your first pick, but I'm here if you need to talk. Maybe later. We just can't talk about it. I can't talk about it right now. I, I'm sorry I was rude. It's okay. Sophie? Yeah? Thank you. Okay, y'all. Uh, we might have still saved it. We might have still saved it. So, you see Wendy is irrational when she's emotional, bro. So, she probably wrote that on her door, not even caring or thinking about the fact that she might lose her job. And so me cleaning it up might have just saved her job for real. Like it might have just saved her job for real. Like when she come back around, she be like, damn, I should never wrote the hypocrite bitch on her door. Like now I lost my job, but we cleaned it for her. So she covered. Ooh, okay. Where are we going to room 509? Winnie on my side now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do have 506 next on my list. Should I pop in before checking out 509? Yeah, let's clean this real quick. We don't need nothing. Boy, someone's been living it up. We clean all this up. Let me go ahead and clean all this up before we get to 509. We did. We checked all the garbage cans, right, y'all? Oh, wait. There's one in here. There's one in here. Got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, let's put this shit together. Let me get my little my little shit out. Hmm. It is definitely an edge piece. I think I need to go this way. Which I think a little right. Okay. Maybe this one go here. This will show another edge piece, or maybe it go up top. Number four. Okay, not yet. This might go over here somewhere. Yo, this is crazy. Okay. Let's go up top for sure. Three. Five. I think that fit. I think that fit right here, y'all. And then we got nope. This one. Yup. 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 Boom. Boom. Let's go. Let's go. It's some kind of code. Could I break it? Okay. I don't need to go in that room. I already got everything I need to do. Okay. I don't have shit for four. That yarn map Mr. Morgan has on the wall of 505. Weren't there some peculiar doodles? I gotta go back to 505? Oh my gosh, y'all. This is an intricate, intricate ass puzzle. Okay, we gotta go back to 505. I should keep an eye out for those symbols. I went up on my screen again, y'all, my bad. <laughs> okay. 
Four. Look, look, look. There it is. Four. More of these symbols. Just what I was looking for. Okay, what the fuck is that? Oh, I. Lowercase I is four. Oh my gosh, bro. What 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 is happening right now? What are we about to discover, bro? Why is she writing in code? Lowercase lowercase uh I is four. She was doodling on this too. Look at the numbers right here. This is what we was looking at. Remember? A is two. B is eight. L is, is that a five we were saying? That can't be a five, that's like a music note. Music note. A equals two and L equals the music note, okay. Said so there's something else on Harry's receipt over here. Oh, why? Seven is why. Good, good catch, good catch, Stitch. Appreciate that. Seven or Y equals seven. Okay. And I was trying to see if that heart meant anything, but it don't look like it. I'll put the little H is the squiggle just in case. Do I got anything for H already? I don't. H equals squiggle. Where he got, where she got high at. Was there anything here? Anything here? T equals 30. We did see that written right there. Like capital T is 30 maybe. I'm gonna put that just in case. But I don't think that's the one, but we are gonna put it just in case. Nothing on this. Nothing on this. Nothing on that. All right. Let's go back and see if we can solve this real quick. Back to 509 we go. Okay. Or is I eight is B, music note, is L, it's gotta be a W. Three. Is E, A, I don't have anything for G, do I? Oh, N. Hold on y'all, hold on y'all, hold on y'all. Hold on y'all. What's the W? Let me. I don't know about this. We're gonna have to see. What's six? I don't have six. Seven was Y though. Oh, let's let's put R for this. And then let's do U. M T X. No, it can't be next. What's the squiggly? This H. I don't have slash. This gotta be W. And this gotta be V. This N. I will leave note in the vent next to your room. That yarn map Mr. Morgan has on the wall of 505. Weren't there oh. some peculiar doodles? symbols maybe 
I got this. Snoop around. Find, I gotta find the missing symbols. I will leave note in the vent next to your room. We know that's what it says, but I guess they want me to find the, the symbols. So let's see. That yarn map Mr. Morgan has on the wall of 505. Weren't there some peculiar doodles? Let me just let me just get all the doodles. Oh, these symbols match some of the ones on the torn message. That's one of the symbols. Oh, these symbols match okay, yeah, some I gotta of the do ones this. on the torn message. Hmm, yeah. I think these match the symbols on the papers I collected. Okay, I gotta get all on. Aha! I'll have to remember these. Aha! I'll have to remember these. These are part of the same set. I think more of these symbols. Just what I was looking for. Okay. So I gotta go click on the ones in room five oh uh already did this one. I gotta go click on the ones in five oh five. I didn't realize I had to click them. Bro still ain't come out in his room. What was this? More of these symbols. Just what I was looking for. That's one of the symbols. Yes. These are part of the same set. I think I can use this. Yes, these are part of the same set. I think I can use this. Oh, with everything, right? <laughs> Don't think he will. And I know he's going to buy some more film. Bro probably ain't gonna come to it later on in the game. All right, I think that's all of them. I hope. This the vent. It's gotta be the vent. It is. I ain't gonna do it yet, though. Let me get my achievement just in case. Okay, so we got four I, we got X, W, oh no, eight W, um, four I, we're using no L, L, three E. Where do we find the G at? We didn't find the G yet. We didn't find a squiggle. We ain't find none of them shit. I don't know where those could be. Gonna be on a receipt. Bring that back to my cart. Yeah, I don't know where the rest of the, the words would be. Be on one of these. Already looked at these, didn't I? I mean, I already got I already got what the note says, but I don't know if it's a cutscene or something. Pick up the lights off. Here we go. Yeah, no, she ain't putting that on that. Locked. It looks like the code is made up of four letters. Yeah, bro. I don't know where else it would be. I guess it would still be in his room. 
the vent in the corner of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to see if it was anything that would like pop up. Um, if I ended up getting all the clues. I'm gonna go back to his room real quick. I thought we got everything from under here though. I mean, in the bedroom you were in? In the first bedroom? In 505? Yeah, because there ain't nothing else in here. Bro, got some cigarettes. Old ports. <laughs> oh, new port, old port. That's funny. What's this? That's one of those flyers. Okay. You said in the bedroom, in the corner of the room, vent in the corner of the room of the bedroom that I was in. There's a hole, I think, before I went there. You talking about this one? Ooh, there's a cold breeze coming out of there. I can't even open that jump. Looks like someone had quite the shopping spree. In the corner of the bedroom, he says, a vent. Oh, right here? In the room? Oh, right here? It won't let me open that one. This looks right up Andrew's alley. I wonder if he's read this one. We got the birth control joint. What I got a key to? Oh, this is the master key. Oh, I thought maybe he hid papers. Nah, he hid the note in the vent, but. Oh, wait, let's see what this is. Nope. I just can't find where the last. Like a few clues that even though I solved the letter, it won't get to me unless I'm going to the wrong vent. And it won't end on this receipt, was it? Uh, won't end on the receipt. Ain't nothing I can do with this stuff right here. Oh, wait. Looks like you had a few appointments with him, Mr. Cruz. Or her. Appointments. SW. Looks like you had a few appointments with him, Mr. Cruz. Or her. Okay. That's all we got up here. We already looked at those two letters. Oh, wait, let's check the picture. Oh, that's just a thing. Someone's been sleeping here. I should leave it as it is. Nothing with the lights all. Oh, wait, we can do something with this. Hold on. I'm not sure how the children are affected by what goes on at a bar on a Friday night. I'm no lieutenant, so. Oh. Write something on the menu, maybe? So. Oh. And call. I should wait till I have more to report before calling back. Nothing with the Bible. Yeah, I don't know what the other uh, few letters would be. We need the J, K, uh, Q, and Z, and F. We got everything we need though. Press any key to enter. I will leave. Oh wait. I will leave notes in the Wow. Room. I forgot the S, y'all. <laughs> I forgot the S, y'all.
That's on me. Clarington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. Hey Beth, it's me. Hey, so how did the snooping go? Find anything? I did. I found a message written in strange symbols. A kind of secret code. A secret code? Well, spill the beans. What did it say? I will leave notes in the vent next to your room. In the vent? Who the hell does that? I don't know. But whoever the message was intended for went through a lot of trouble to hide it. Mm -hmm. It was torn in a dozen pieces and scattered in three different trash cans. Yeah, they was trying to hide that. So the cruises are keeping secrets from each other. Do you think one of them's having an affair? No, I think it's I blackmail. Because it they really withdrew like the mail. bank account. Blackmail? What makes you say that? I found a bank statement belonging to Mrs. Cruz. Her account was emptied very recently. Ooh, that's interesting. But it could mean a lot of things. What do you mean? Well, people need their money, especially when they're nah, traveling. Nah, bro, not $5,000. Now in 1957. All of it does seem a bit strange. Is that all you've got to back your theory? I also found a letter from some sort of company, Fernie and Weissman. It mentions a security breach. Targeting the cruises? Just the way. Huh? It seems some of her <laughs> Yo, private was good, bro. We'll was stolen in. by someone. Hmm. A large withdrawal and a security breach? That can't be a coincidence. Maybe they got something on Mrs. Cruz. Something so bad she had to empty her bank account just to shut them up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I see it, yeah. It could be blackmail for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Do you think Mr. Morgan's the blackmailer? Mm. Or Morgan was hired to what find the, the blackmailer. What if hired him to find the blackmailer's identity? Well, if that's the case, he's pretty lousy at it. I mean, he's taking pictures of them. Stalking them. I'd call that following the wrong target. Maybe and he up. hopes to catch the blackmailer the next time he gets in touch with them. Huh, maybe. I'll go have a look at the vent that's mentioned in the message. Just to be sure we're on the right track. Yeah, good idea. Before. What vent are you talking about? I'm about to go on break, so if you need my help again, just ask Andrew to patch you through to the break room. All right, enjoy your break. Oh, I will. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. I gotta get some more water. I drunk all of it. You have solved the secret code in Puzzle 509. Let's go. All right. Now what vent they talking about? This one? Yep, it's exactly the one. Another secret note, y'all. Can't open these without a screwdriver. Oh, I need a screwdriver. Go munch. I need a screwdriver. It's probably not a good time to disturb Bernard. Bro, I thought. I'm sure. Bro, I thought. I thought when I thought Linda was setting it up. I thought Linda was lying and, and trying to get and trying to get Wendy fired, but they really she really cheating. He's Bernard's really cheating on Wendy with Linda, yo. Bro, okay, okay, y'all saw, but I don't know if y'all saw my trophy pop up. It, I got a trophy because I erased the message off of uh, Linda's door, so nobody got fired. So I don't know if y'all seen that, but we didn't get Wendy fired. But now we know, we know Bernard is cheating on Wendy with Linda. So we got that we got that in our in our memory bank if, if we never need to you know save ourselves in a situation. What, what I gotta get? A screwdriver, right? I might be able to find a screwdriver in the closet. janitor's closet. Oh, oh the janitor's closet this way. I thought I had to go downstairs. 
Let me see. Screw. I guess I was hoping that whoever is leaving these notes had left the vent grid open, but no such luck. I need to find a screwdriver to get it open, which shouldn't be too difficult of a task, I think. The end of the closet is right nearby after all. Theories, theories, theories. Call the Beth. I will leave notes. Treasure, I'm on trash. Sorry for what? Secret message. Empty in the coffers. I'm on the case, sleeping solo. Boom. Okay. Rebecca. Laundry room. Had the cruise. Marcella cruise. And we got all these clues right here. Nah, bro. Hearing them like actually cheating, like in the hotel room. That's crazy. Okay. Say, so do a scary react on the next stream if I had nothing planned. Yeah, for sure, bro. Um, in the Discord, if you join the Discord, I got a reactions page in there, so you can uh post like videos and stuff that you want me to react to. We actually was reacting to the Poppy Playtime trailer earlier today. My bad. Uh, hmm. I've never seen two people more suited for each other. I hope they work things out. That's Wendy and Jock. Eugene's a pro at fixing the fuse box whenever there's a power outage. You got a note in here too? Everybody got secret notes. What the hell? Okay. Okay, hold on, y'all. Let's put this together. I don't think we got all the pieces for this. But it, it's written to Eugene, though. Which I think they go together. Okay, so that can't go over here. This is where it started. So maybe. Yeah, put that together. Put that together. What'd it say? Eugene. Nice priority, huh? That means Eugene's probably working in Bernard's office right now. Eugene, Bernard tells me there's a cold draft coming from his window and is turning his office into a freezer. Fixing this should be your highest priority today. Linda sent that, sent that to him so they can go into the room and nobody hear him. Crazy, bro. A shop owner against New Mental Hospital. Arrington. Sounds like Eugene asked Bernard to stop opposing the construction of the new psychiatric hospital. And Bernard was Bernard. Dear Eugene, I was unaware of your daughter's condition. I can only imagine how difficult this must be for you and your wife. But do not worry. You only have to look at my brother to see how rotten apples even how rotten apples grow even in the best families. As for your request, I'm, unfra I'm afraid I'm unable to grant it. Mr. Weston is both a good friend of mine and a benefactor of the Clarington, so it would be inappropriate for me to oppose him. Also, considering his great influence in this city, I have no doubt he would manage to prevent the hospital's construction no matter what. Thank you for understanding, Bernard. Wow, okay. Oh, here we go, toolbox. Shoot, no screwdriver. Hm. What's life without a little challenge? Oh wait, so we can't use one of these? I'm pretty sure you can get that open with this right here. This must be Eugene with his daughter. He looks like a caring father. Okay. So no screwdriver in there. Wait, Sophie, you don't need these. Be careful. It's a slippery slope towards becoming a hoarder. Eugene must be down in Bernard's office. Oh, okay, we gotta go ask. Shoot, no screwdriver. 
Hmm. What's life without a little challenge? Okay, we gotta go to Bernard's office and ask Eugene for a screwdriver. I thought she was saying it. They in there going crazy, boy. That's wild. Going crazy in room 508. Look at Bernard, bro. Why we ain't just hear him in there busting down Linda Cheeks? <clears throat> it's uh, Miss Bellevent, isn't it? What? Oh, um, right. Huh, right. Hey, bro, trying to act like he know me. You're the one who took last week off, aren't you? You had to uh, take care of your sister, I think? Mother. My mother. She's, um, she's very sick. Hmm. No, I hope this doesn't become a recurring thing. I need to know I can count on you. I understand, sir. What are you doing here, anyway? Are you on break? Oh, shoot. Indication lies might get you out of a tough spot, but be careful. Do not get caught out of a lie. See, if I tell him I need a screwdriver, he's going to ask me why he needs a screw, why I need a screwdriver. But if I lie, say I'm on break. No, I'm just getting a screwdriver. A screwdriver? What for? Um, loose vent. Well, that sounds like a job for Eugene, doesn't it? Yes, you're right. Then leave the repairs to him. Okay, I will. <clears throat> well, don't you look mischievous. Oh. Hey, Bean. If you're planning to give Bernard a good scare, sign me up. No, I'm looking for a screwdriver for the vent. Linda asked Eugene to fix Bernard's window. Oh, I see. Eugene? What the hell? You'd better go and take a look. What? I'll stand guard by the elevator and make some noise if I see Bernard coming. Okay, thanks. I'll be quick. Did Eugene leave? Oh my gosh, I gotta snoop around some more. Okay, there goes screwdriver. Let me get that. Aha. Let's get you to that vent. Opposing something that could help so many people just because it's close to your hotel? This is ridiculous. It says, Dear Mr. Weston, I would like to thank you again for agreeing to this partnership between the Clarington Hotel and Weston's department store. Thanks to your generous help, renovations are well underway and the hotel has never looked better. You should come visit soon when your busy schedule allows it, of course. On another note, it has come to my attention that you have formed a group of local businessmen to oppose the construction of the new mental hospital. After working so hard to elevate the Clarington standards, I cannot allow a band of cuckoos to move in my backyard. Should you accept, it would be an honor and a privilege to join your fight. Cordially, or yours sincerely, Bernard Leduc, handwritten by Eugene. Enjoy the coal, you cold-hearted prick. Maybe Eugene stuffed the vent? No, 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 no. So Yo Eugene was supposed to be coming in here to fix his window, but he never did. And then he wrote on this note, which I'm going to leave there for Bernard to find. I'm going to leave that note there for Eugene because I can throw it away, right? Yeah, we, we leaving that for Br Bernard to find. He need to know about himself. What did it say? Check on room 602. Ask Eugene to fix radiator. Call Weston's office. Apologize to Mr. and Mrs. Drake for battling time ball mishap. Speak with contractor about cost overruns. Call Weston's office again. Decide winner for employee of the month award. Okay. I should have lied to, uh, to Bernard, bro. I don't even like him. I'm going to start lying to him. Look at this. Bro got her bra in here. Windows? Linda? This does not look like a nice brotherly check-in. I had no idea things were this bad between Bernard and Raymond. 
Dear brother, I thank you for your invaluable input, but I need but need I remind you the terms of our agreement. I did my part. I got you out of jail and have ensured the news that news of your deviant ways would not leak. Now, I expect you to keep your side of the bargain and stay out of my way. You're not in charge of the hotel anymore. I have worked relentlessly the past last two years to return the Clarington to its former glory. A great challenge considering the poor state you left it in. I'm glad father never got to see how you so shamelessly destroyed his legacy. As for me, I would be dead be too before I listen to a single word of advice from you. You ask, I lower our prices, but I can tell you I plan on doing just the opposite. My guess will only be be la creme wait my guess will only be la creme de la creme your deviant friends can find themselves another place for their sinful debaucheries enjoy your retirement grits that vent is holding surely your break is over by now no it's not i came by here not too long ago and andrew was already covering for you that's because i was in the ladies room that's no excuse to it's my time of the month i uh her loud ass heels. You're married, aren't you? So you know how it is. I have to go more often, and oh, sometimes I stain the furniture, and, and don't get me started on all the. That's enough details. I, Miss Bellavent, what were you doing in my office? I wasn't. I was. I was simply closing the door. Someone left it ajar. Huh. Must have been Eugene. Well, don't you have? Work to do? Yes, sir. Then get to it. Uh, Mr. Drake has asked okay. to see you. He didn't catch Again? us on that one. God, he just can't get enough of me, can he? Just indulge him. Apologize one more time for Friday's mishap. Do whatever needs to be done. We cannot afford to lose such loyal guests. Okay, fine. That was a close one. Yeah. We good. I had a few cold sweats, but at least I found what I was looking for. Good. Well, if you need me, I'll be attending to the whims and worries of our entitled client. Yes. yes. Don't be a stranger. Okay, Beth. We find out. All right, y'all. We got the screwdriver. The Bernard Whisperer. <laughs> The guy boy Andrew. Party was again? Can't talk Ooh, to him. That's big. It might be a bit difficult to. All right, we back to the fifth floor. Let's see what this note talking about, bruh. And he still called me. I just realized he still called me Miss Bellavit. That is not my name, bro. I just told you my last name was Roy. Sophia or Sophie Roy. All right, let's open the vent. We own oh, it. We own I it. I guess I'm free to disturb room 508 now. But that's where Bernard and Linda were. Ew. Look, she really bought the lingerie, y'all. Clean this shit up, man. Oh, I should have left it dirty. Look at the tissues. Oh my gosh, bro. Bernard is a nasty dude. On the tissues, though. That's crazy. They had the champagne. Like, bro, that's crazy. I gotta see what Linda looked like, bro. Cause from the little drawing we got of Wendy, Wendy eating Linda up for sure. I'm trying to see if they left any secrets up in here.
throw them shits away. They ain't even take no shower. Take it down. Hey, dirt balls. With the Holy Bible right there. That's crazy. Anything in here? Oh, they got a whole water heater right here. We made sure the picture ain't gotta be uh, adjusted. That cool. I think everything in here clean, y'all. What y'all think? We got a bed right. Pillows already good. Move the lingerie here and nasty stuff. It's on my cart. I'm sure I'll find more laundry to add to the pile. That's what we can't add. What about the dishes? There you go. Got it. Okay, boy, it's another decryption, y'all. It's another it's another Decipher a deciphered letter Now I feel like we're gonna need the rest of them letters in order to solve this one Okay, so we got dash is M I know three is E so meat Yep Meat me that's O it's gotta be in. It's gotta be I. It's gotta be G. It's gotta be H. In my room. Oh my gosh, y'all. He is a cheater, bro. Meet me in tonight in my room. What's the comma? Michelle. Two is what? A? Oh, Michael. Yep, Michael. Will. Be. Sleeping. Wait, what's the plus? What's the cross? Yeah, P. We need. To discuss. Meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. Mm. Clarington Hotel reception desk. So who wrote that? Speaking. It's me. Oh, hello, Bean. Anything new to report? Actually, that's why I'm calling. Would you mind looking up another guest for me? Ooh, so you've got more names? Yeah. Someone named Michael? Hmm. Let me check the logbook. How did you get that name anyway? I found another message written in secret code. It says, meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. So another husband, huh? Maybe. Mm. Well, there's a Michael staying in room 507. Mrs. Beaumont's room? But she doesn't have a husband. She's here alone with, oh, Michael must be her son. I got him some extra blankets the other day so he could build a fort. Hmm. Could Marcella? Yes. Yeah. Uh, What's next? I guess I should go have a look at 507, but it's not on my list. There's a do not disturb sign on the door. Well, I could call the room to make sure no one's there. Good idea. Hang on. Mm. Yo, bet the real one, y'all. Bet the real one. I'm glad we call her. Andrew would not have us doing this. You've got the all clear, Bean. Head on over. Thanks, Beth. I'll call you back. Mm. 
Dope in the vent and decoded a second message. Should we throw this stuff away? Clean up the evidence, man. They don't need to know I found their secret messages. Okay, the vent already closed. Let's go to 507. All right, in her room, we not touching anything, y'all. We not cleaning nothing. We not throwing nothing away. Let's get to the bottom of this and find out what links these rooms together. Funny how some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom. So a husband can abuse his wife and just get away with it? And people like Linda still think divorce is wrong? Ugh. Okay, Richard and Carter attorneys at law. Dear Ann, I have met with Luis and he has asked me to give you this enclosed letter. I think I should reiterate that some of your accusations such as wife abuse and not grounds are not grounds for divorce in Quebec. I understand you are hurt, but I do not think antagonizing your husband is a very is very wise at the moment. Was it in here? It ain't in here. I mean, it is in here, but it ain't in, in that suitcase. Dog, if I do that one more time. <laughs> you bet. Okay, there we go. There we go, there we go. Is this it? That's a cone. That's a thumb net, thumb tack. I don't think I'll need this again. Okay, I keep thinking that ticket is something, but that's that's not that's not that's not it. Definitely ain't gonna be up there. That's his letter. Another letter. Is her doll back? I still don't know if I should throw my pictures away. The pictures that he took of me. I don't know what she, where we, we didn't even see that key in here. I just pick up a key. 
I think I got the key from that. Think, Sophie. Where have you seen a key like that one before? In a safe? Bro, I checked the safe, didn't I, y'all? That shit was not in here. Ah, huh, there you are. With Marcella. Ah. Oh. God knows where she is. Clarington Hotel reception desk. Beth speaking. Hey, Beth. Bean, I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently, it got so heated, he had to get involved. Mm. And listen to this. It sounds like I was on the right track, because he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Want to guess what it is? A fair. A fair? Bingo. Hmm. Did Jack hear anything else? From what he told me, it seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Mm. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but that doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. I think it can only be opened by turning two keys at once. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh? The other one? Well, I remembered seeing a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's stocking pictures, so I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Wait, so Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest? Correct. Bingo. Yeah, there's definitely something going Bingo. on. Bingo. I think they're having an affair. They must be good. The answer probably yeah, lies in that the chest. the answers probably lie in that chest, and I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. Hmm, yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Get me a candle and some plaster, and maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. How? I'll tell you later. Just find me those things and I'll meet you in the basement as soon as I'm Okay, we back on the prowl. All right. Thank you for not giving up. Let's Come go. On, you know I wouldn't let you down. Shout out to Beth. Shout out to Beth. Shout out to Beth. W W friend. W friend. Nitra said you should play mortuary assistant. Definitely not scary. You cannot get me, buddy. Plaster and candles. They already been asking me to play that. Well, Half the hotel's under renovation. I should be able to find plaster somewhere around here. We 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 gonna have to hit like a a big goal for me to play that. That might be one of the options when I do like a tipathon or something in the future. I just go in rooms. Somebody in this room? Not in here, but all right. Plaster and candles, y'all. With the renovations, there oh, has to be plaster floor. somewhere on this floor. I should grab some before going down. This takes care of half of this little scavenger hunt. As for the candles, doesn't Rebecca keep some in her locker downstairs? Let me put this key back before we leave. Just in case they come back to the room. Hmm. I oh, okay. Put it back yet. Okay, never mind. Never I mind. still need this. All right, now we got to go to Rebecca Locker downstairs and get some candles. So I feel like she's about to try to make a fake version of the key out of plaster and candles. I don't know if that's going to be hard enough to go in there. That might be too soft. Uh, like the wax going to be too like melty. Rebecca, Andrew. Eugene, Bobby. 
Jack. That's what she said. Okay, there we go. I gotta put the key back too. Jocker dating, not Wendy and uh and Bernard, bro. What? There. I don't want it anymore. Candles, candles, candles. I think Rebecca keeps a stash of them, but where? I'm trying to get my key. Gotta hold on to these tight. Let me put the master key back. Bro crying. Dang. I can't talk to him like I can talk to Wendy, huh? Look, Wendy and Jock. Oh, another one. Wendy and Jock have really gotten around. We gotta find some more lockers, bro. What are the lockers at? Here we go. Thank you, Nod. I can't believe you can do something like that. He's worked with us for years. He's always been loyal. Is there, is there anything you might have said or done to anger him? What are you saying? That I deserve this? No, no, of course not. All I need to say is that maybe from his perspective, well, uh, oh, never mind. What are you going to do now? Fire himself. <laughs> uh, I don't know what on earth is going on here. Is it because of that goddamn snowstorm? Or was there something in the coffee this morning? What do you mean? Well, the whole staff's completely off today. Doc leaving luggage carts everywhere. Wendy asking for a day off. Beth. Oh, don't even get me started. Beth. Oh, and that maid? What's her name? Sylvie? I never noticed how odd she Broke never remember my name. You mean. I like her. She's a good girl. You know what? I should call the city. Tell them they don't need to build that new madhouse next door. <laughs> There's one right here. Oh, Bernard. It's not that bad. I'm here, aren't I? <sighs> Come here. Let me help you forget about all that for a minute. These freak niggas, man, every time they, they be having sex every time. They, they were just in room 508. Susan, Wendy, somebody, Carol, Beth, Sophie, Rebecca. Rebecca, the VIP guest in room 602 is getting at my nerves. He keeps ordering food that's not on the menu. We don't usually do special orders, but Bernard was adamant that we make all of his wishes come true. Do I look like a goddamn genie? That's not even the worst of it though. Every night he barges in the kitchen as if he was at home asking for meal, oh wait, asking for meat for his precious little terriers who feeds dogs $4 roast beef. I can't even afford, even afford $4 roast beef for myself, Bobby. There's a key at the door, yeah, that's the key I just put back. So you do have a stash of candles, but where is it? Rebecca, the kitchen is out of power again. And I can barely see a thing. Bernard wants us to continue working, but I'm not risking chopping my finger off for that blowhard. Then you start hoarding candles since the last power outage. I remember you were saying you would never want it to be caught in a dark basement again. Where's your stash? It's urgent. Please, Bobby. Okay. That's all we got here. We gotta find her. We gotta find her. Uh, drinks. Maybe Bobby took some candles from Rebecca already. Yeah. Who oh, this, this our girl. Wait. Is this you, Beth? What on earth led to this picture being taken? Hey, she said she used to model. Is that a live alligator? I think I die on the spot. Hey, Beth kind of 
No? That's kind of bad in that one. Are you looking to buy land? I know you grew up on a farm. Maybe you're looking to get back to nature. Alright, we're looking for a bobby locker now. Or we could just open anybody locker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just put this key back because I got my keys now. Okay. Anthony, Jock, Bobby. No candles, but this looks like the laundry room. That must be the location of Rebecca's stash. In the locker room, okay. I mean, in the laundry room. They got me going on a wild goose chase for these candles. Oh, there it is. Got a candle. Now, what next? Gotta take them to Beth. And she said, meet her where? Where I'm supposed to be meeting Beth at? Let's see if Beth is around. In the break room, right? Yeah, there she go. There you are. I'm not sure I understand what the plan is here. Well, when I was little, we had padlocks on many of the farm's sheds. My dad would always lose the keys, so one day he made a mold of them using wax and plaster. Mm, I, I knew was it. thinking of doing the same. Are you sure it's gonna work? Absolutely not. But hey, I guess we won't know until we try. Yeah, you're right. So let's do this. Go. Lock in. Okay, to start, we need to pour the wax from the pot. Have you done this before? You're a real pro. Okay. Now, time to put, let's give it a few seconds. So the mold really takes form. Okay, I think you can remove it. Well, we're almost there. Just pour the cup of plaster into the mold. Let that harden. All right. Now we wait for it to dry. How long do you think it's going to take? I don't know. I guess we'll keep poking it every now and then. I bet you didn't think you'd be making a plaster key today, huh? <laughs> Indeed. But I like it. It's rare that this job allows me to use my creative side. Your creative side? Well, granted, this key won't end up in any museum, but I enjoy the occasional artistic endeavor. Oh, shoot. Should I tell her that? Like taming like alligator? Posing with alligators? How do you know about that? Oh, um, I think it must have slipped out of your locker because I saw this picture of you in a long white dress and... Oh, my. You did? What did you think of it? <laughs> I loved I it. I loved it, actually. It was unique, I guess. Artistic. Smooth snooper. Let's yeah. go. Those pictures were taken by, uh... Very close friend of mine a few years back. Ziva Rivers was her name. Earth shattering talent, but a bit too controversial for most people's sensibilities. <laughs> oh, are you still friends? No, we, uh, we went our separate ways. It's a shame. She, uh, she really captured me, my essence. Mm. Your essence is to tame alligators? My essence is to fear nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I really admire that about you. I'm sure under that sweet exterior, you're pretty fearless too. I guess. Haven't you ever done something really scary? I mean, other than snooping on a potential creep. Um, the sailing count? Excuse me, you sail? On a boat? <laughs> I used to, with my grandpa. But when he died, we had to sell the boat to pay off his debts. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to go with you. Maybe we can still find a way. Maybe it'd be possible to borrow a boat for a day. I 
think one of Grandpa's friends still has his. Really? That would be great. I just love trying new things. We bag and we bag and Beth, y'all. We bag and Beth. Hey, look. I think it's dry. I can't believe it worked. I could not have done this without you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Well, I should get back upstairs before Bernard notices my absence, if he hasn't already. Let me know how it goes with the key. Oh, and uh, be careful while turning it, okay? You wouldn't want it to break inside the lock. Yeah, I'll be careful. Thank you for everything. Okay. No problem. We locked in, we locked in. So, yeah, tattoo? Oh no, this are veins. Um. What I just realized here, because when I'm getting these trophies, it's saying you've done this with your acolyte or whatever. So I think I think we could have chose um we could have chose Beth or we could have chose Andrew and the story would have played out the same. It just would have been we had a male character instead of a female character. So I just realized that I a fresh pair of eyes on it. Her phone at I can't call which I'm gonna call it. Yeah, there we go. Bertha. Clarington Hotel reception desk. Best speaking. Hey, Stitches. I forgot all I'm about the, the cat collar. Always been. I opened the chest in room 507. You did? Damn, I have to admit I didn't really believe in our little plaster key, but way to go. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised as well. It's quite sturdy. So, spill it. What's in the chest? A riddle. A riddle? I think it was written by Mrs. Beaumont for Mrs. Cruz. And I think the answer will give me the combination for a case I found in room 509. So is it ISBE? E? Oh, God, I hate is it riddles. <sighs> well, let's hear it. Oh, no, Which I think her name was. Causing you trouble? Um, unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Do you know what this could mean? Hmm. You said. Mrs. Beaumont wrote the riddle, right? Yeah, but I have no idea what her favorite bar is. I think I do. Really? How? Uh, that's a story for another time. But if I had to bet, I'd put my money on the white cat. The white cat. I think I get it. Well, that wasn't too hard, was it? Is there anything else? Nope. That's all. Thank you. Ah, uh, don't mention it. I'm just glad I could be of some help. Okay. Call me Let me check that, that collar again. I don't know if it's Bertha. No, I will. The Bertha or like Gertrude. I can't remember what the free the, the cat name is. Greta. I S G R. On the first one, take the first two. G R O oh, G R I S G R I S. Greta. Okay, I think it's gonna be G-R-I-S. I don't know what it's supposed to stand for, but let's try it. What the freak is GRIS supposed to stand for? You solve Anne's riddle and open the case in room 509. That novelist, Bridget Boswell, is actually you, Marcella? Oh! Dear Marcella, or should I say Bridget, you know I prefer a good old crime story, but last week I came upon a romance novel in, with an intriguing title, and they were roommates. 
I bought it on impulse at a train station and read it from cover to cover during the journey. Can you imagine my surprise when I recognized our story? You may have changed the names and locations, but all of your, but all of our moments are still there. Our endless discussions in the dorm room, our first date at the theater, our trip to Quebec City. You often say writers are thieves, but I never fully understood until now. It has been almost 10 years since I received your last letter. The letter that painted our relationship as nothing more than a summer fling. At first, I could not believe you had written those words. Then I waited in vain for your answer and had to accept your love for me had never been real. For many years, I was broken hearted, angry, confused. I questioned the nature of our feelings of our attraction and made many wrong decisions. But this book, your book, am I foolish to think is proof that you really love me? In any case, I hope you're well and I'm happy to see you accomplish your dream of becoming a writer. Trust sincerely. Oh, Anne, murder might be a bit much, but you deserve some kind of justice. Mm. And then we got another letter right here. Dear Marcella, I didn't expect you to reply to my letter, but I'm happy to see that I was wrong. Your words have comforted me in a great time of distress. If only Louis was half the man you say Hector is. He has quite a temper and hits me frequently. I am willing to put up with it as long as he doesn't hurt Michael, but there are some days where it becomes almost un unbearable. The other day I dreamt of our first date. We were watching The Postman only rings twice again, but suddenly we were in the movie. You were Lena Turner and I was John Garfield, and we both were plotting to kill my husband. I hate to admit it, but I almost hope it was premonitory. Okay, y'all. So this is the plan that they had to discuss and this is why they were writing in code. They trying to plot on killing her husband, I think. To answer your question, I do still have our box. My brother is currently in Atlanta for work and I was thinking of going to see him with Michael next month. If you're able to meet me there, we can open the box together and laugh at the silly things we thought important all those years ago. I hope to hear from you soon. Trust and sincerely, A or N. P.S. Do you remember that secret language we invented to so Sister Miller couldn't understand the notes we passed during her class? In secret language i still do i do like a happy ending i just hope that's where your story is headed then we got another letter dear marcella thank you for sending me a signed version of your latest novel i think it's your greatest work yet but i do have a few comments to help make the next one even better first i believe rose should be more concerned with what she deserves than what her husband deserves he may not deserve the pain she will cause by leaving him but they both deserve to be happy and they won't be as long as they remain together as long as she doesn't listen to her own needs. Also, I think it would be great if your next novel ended on a more positive note. Imagine if Rose left her husband and rode into the sunset with Eve. Imagine if they went to New York or Los Angeles, someplace where people like us are tolerated. Imagine they got if they got their happy ending. It would be the best story ever. I hope you will consider it. Trust and sentiment? A. P.S. I know you say invisibility protects us, but don't you just wish to be seen sometimes? When you like to when you like people to know you are Bridget Boswell to recognize you on the street to recognize you for your work Why not publish your next novel under your own name? Oh So you came to Montreal under the pretense of celebrating your wedding anniversary But all along you meant to reunite with Anne Mmm, yo, this is getting deep y'all Dear Marcella, I left the house. I left Lewis. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't lie anymore How do you do it? How do you manage to live a double life? to hide your work and your novels from your husband. I had so much less to hide and yet, Michael and I are staying in the Clarington Hotel until we find a place to stay and the divorce is done. I don't know how long it will take. Could you come and see me in Montreal? I really need you by my side right now. Trust and sentiment, A. P.S. I wouldn't put it past Lewis to scour every hotel guest book in the region looking for me under his surname. So I'll register under the name Beaumont. Mmm. I wonder what's in it. We could open it. I mean, that's kinda illegal. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Well, too late. I've always known I would end up in prison. <laughs> Yo, she is wild then, bruh. So? It's three train tickets. And, uh, oh, there's a tourism pamphlet for California. California? So, Anna and Marcella want to go there to live their love freely. Mm. Anna and Marcella, huh? You three are best pals now? Well, after reading so much of their correspondence, I kind of feel like I know them. 
you know? Yeah. But what about Mr. Morgan, though? I mean, Paul. How does he fit into all of this? He was a fan of Marcella. And Marcella hired him. Both of these are true. But he was really a fan of Marcella. Turns out he's a big fan of Marcella. Is she a celebrity or something? More or less. She writes pulp fiction under his pseudonym. I think her books gave Paul a chance to get out of his own head while he was staying in a psychiatric hospital. Huh, I see. He's still kind of a creep. Though. Yeah, that still don't explain why he got pictures of me. Stalking her like that. That's going too far. And why did he have those pictures of you? That's what I'm trying to find out, I Beth. I guess we'll never know for sure, but I don't think it was ever about me. It's always been about Anne and Marcella. Exactly. Well, it feels a tad anticlimactic, but who needs drama, right? At least it made our day pretty interesting. It sure did. You know, after today, I think I get why you're so interested in the lives our guests lead. I try to forget they exist as soon as I'm done interacting with them. But once in a while, it's nice to remember that... Well, even the most put-together person could be an absolute mess on the other side of the door. And who are you behind closed doors? What about you? Who is Beth Lambert when no one's looking? I like to think that with me, what you see is what you get. But maybe an extra Snoopy super sleuth could uncover a few more layers. Maybe <laughs> one I didn't even know I had. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Mm. When your shift ends, all right? We could leave together if you want. Sure. If we're able to. Okay. With all that snow, I'm thinking maybe we'll have no choice but to spend the night here. Yes, sir. A sleepover. We could set up a pillow fort on the mezzanine. A pillow fort? We do work in a hotel, you know. There are actual beds here. I know, but isn't my way so much more fun? Well. We could take a page out of Michael's book and decorate it, and then spend the night throwing stuff at Bernard whenever he comes through the lobby. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> Let's go. We, 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 we bad Beth on that one, too. I just have to finish my tasks for the day, and then I can leave. That ringing sounds like the elevator doors are jammed. Who did? Who is that? They gotta be Paul, bro. They gotta be Paul. Is that Mr. Cruz? Oh, they was planning on killing her husband, won't they? Mr. Cruz? It is Stitches, bro. Mr. Cruz. Oh, God. Oh, God. What happened? You know what happened. What's blood on my shoes? Oh, shit. Now I'm a real detective. Hold on. Okay. Got a, a... Should I hold on to this, maybe? Fuse box. We just get to the fuse box in the janitor's closet, Sophie. It's not far. A B. And Beaumont. And Beaumont. Should I put this ice pit down, y'all? I don't want it to have my fingerprints on it. I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna pick it up. I can't open this. Is this somebody's body in here? Okay, we gotta go to the fuse box. So somebody stabbed bro in there. The back on. That was, they stabbed Mr. Cruz in that room. He ran and tried to get on the elevator, but bro died. So now we gotta turn the fuse box on. Thank God. Now, to get the power back, 
Okay, we need a 15 amp right here. Let me see. 15. What I would give to have you with me right now. Your note will have to make do. There are the power outage and I'm busy preventing another part of this hotel from collapsing. Here's what to do. Check the fuse box plan for required ampage of each socket. Remove all blown fuses from socket. Tip, blown fuses are usually blackened. Screw in new fuses and sockets and make sure the amperage is collect. Flick the big power lever to restore, to restore power. So this is a, 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 a one. That's the only one, huh? Oh, that one is too. Okay, those two. Yes, this is what I need. I don't know if the killer's still up here. Okay, we need a 15 amp. So yeah, we need a type A right here. That's 15. And then we need a 20 amp. Oh, this one. I need to change all of the blown fuses. I didn't see that one. That's on me. Now we good. You restore the power on the fifth floor. Power's back. Now I should go down to the lobby. Call the police. Where the stairs at? You obviously can't take the elevator, right? Is there anything I've forgotten? Once I leave this floor, I probably won't be able to come back. All right. I'm about to clean all these rooms. Oh, when you call the police up there, that's what I'm saying. Don't matter if I was in your room now. Somebody did. I hate when my mouth start doing that, bro. You have to beat this shit up for it to work. You need to remove that little fake ass key. clean up that room we clean this one up real quick i think i cleaned this one too didn't i when i made the bed and shit yeah yeah all right we good yeah i don't know why she didn't call the piece this man tossing all the evidence making himself look guilty <laughs> clean 505 too. I do 506. Yeah, we did 506. We didn't even see what rooms was down here. 504. I clean this. This the first room we was in. Yeah, this the first room. Okay. 503. Hello. Is anyone in? Hello. I need help. Okay, Sophie. Let's leave, man. She pulled his body I'm out of the way. I would have took the stairs. What kind of hotel I'm is sorry. this? I'm so sorry. 
Oh yeah, my boy did, y'all. All right, Beth, help me out, Beth. Oh, I can go in right here. Okay. Nonchalantly taking the elevator, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I would have took the stairs. There's a man dead. He's been murdered. I I need the police. Please stay calm, ma'am. Where are you right now? The lobby. But the body, it's it's upstairs. Can you give me the address, please? Oh, um 1178 Drummond Street. Somebody gonna be behind me. Alright, ma'am. Officers are on their way. Thank you. I thought somebody was gonna creep up behind me right there. Oh, it's Beth. Oh, hey you. Great timing, right? I'm thinking if we're lucky, Bernard will let us go home. No point in working in the dark. Sophie? B, you're not scared of the dark, are you? Hey, is everything okay? I found Mr. Cruz. Hector. Oh. You did? What was the bloke up to? You don't understand. I found his body. He's... He's dead, Beth. Oh, merde. Merde. Sit down, okay? You look like you're about to think. She French, too? Have you called the police? Yeah, they're... They're on their way. What happened? Was there an accident? No, I don't think so. Someone... Did this to him. You mean... Merde. Oh, merde. Do you think it could have been Anne and Marcella? Y'all, do, do we think it's them? We saw Anne stuff inside that room. So I don't know if it's Anne or if it's Anne or, or if it's Paul. Or if it was Paul. Paul was hiding in that room. He saw Anne and Marcella. He saw Anne and Marcella sitting in there talking. He never came out of his hiding spot. Paul no, Paul didn't die. I, Paul didn't die, I don't think. It said uh he just got the letter from Marcella asking, like, it, I don't know, they didn't let me open the cooler. I was I was trying to see if he was in the cooler or if that was just blood from um from Mr. Cruz like from him he probably saw Paul in the hottest spot over there Paul stabbed him and then Cruz started trying to run out and all the blood was leaking he might have like leaned on the cooler and was like leaking on the cooler then he ran out and then left that trail of blood all the way to the elevator I don't know if he in the cooler though but he was hiding beside the cooler he was hiding beside the cooler like in that little corner it could be all of them, but we trying to see like who actually killed them. But I know they would they, like they was they hinting that it could have been them because they saying that they got a way to, to do the problem. We got the insurance card talking a secret language, so I'm gonna go with yes. I I found something on Hector that would point to that. Yes. Wait. So you touched the body, the dead body? I didn't. I mean, yes, kind of. Sophie. Rule number one when stumbling upon a dead body. Do not touch. I had to move him out of the way. Really get you in trouble. So, what did you find? There was this letter that made it sound like Marcella would get a lot of money from her husband's death. Ugh. Throw the affair into the mix and you get a pretty good motive. That's what I'm thinking. 
I'm probably going to hell for saying this. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm going to hell anyway. But <laughs> I can't really blame her if she did. I'm not sure I'm following. You can't blame her for murder. I'm not excusing it. I'm not. Just... I don't know. Women like Anne and Marcella have so few options. It's like the world is designed to keep them apart. Beth. Well, you know. You know. That photographer I told you about? Ziva Rivers? She was more than a gal pal. We already know, we Beth. We were together for a while, and... I was so in love. It was... It was like a fire rain couldn't put out. I guess like anything that intense, it wasn't meant to last. But while it lasted, I was the happiest I've ever been. And if something had come between us, kept us apart, I would have done just about anything to be with her. Maybe, well, maybe that's what happened here with Anne and Marcella. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me with this. Mm. Maybe now you can understand why I care so much about you. I don't know if I'm feeling inspired by Anne and Marcella, or if it's the shock of being so close to an actual murder, but, um... I'd really like for us to be more than just friends. So let's just take a moment to bask in that. Let me just take a moment to bask yeah. in that. I... I like that too. Uh, that's... <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I'm definitely doing another playthrough, bro. I'm gonna see what it's like with Andrew. Just be mindful of what you tell me, okay? Yeah. Damn, I should have left the ice pick, bro. I picked the ice pick up. I knew I should have left it. Roy? Miss Roy. Now we in the interview room? Miss Roy. Yep. Oh, sorry. We look younger I right here. Distracted. I really need you to focus right now. I don't want to be here all night, and I'm sure you don't either. No. No, I don't. So, as I was saying, we're trying to ascertain the circumstances of Mr. Cruz's death. Can you tell me how you came to find the body? I... I was cleaning room 509 when I heard the elevator bell ring again and again and again. I thought maybe a child was playing with the doors, so I went out in the corridor, and that's when the saw the body. Saw him. All the blood and why was the elevator bell ringing? I'm sorry. You said you heard the elevator bell ring. Why was it ringing? I assume it wasn't a child after all. Well, Mr. Cruz's Why would I lie to the cop about this? Was preventing the doors from closing. Really? When we found the body, it wasn't that close to the door. Oh, okay, we moved it. Oh, um, the stairs are blocked because of the renovations, so the elevator's the only way out of the fifth floor. There we go. I I had no choice but to move the body. Just a little. Ah, so that explains the traces we found. Thank you for clearing that up. See? So what did you do after that? Well, um, that's when the power cut. So I had to go to the janitor's closet. To access the fuse box. Exactly. Hmm. I, I changed a few fuses and turned the power back on. But there's a lock on that box, isn't there? Did you have the key? No, I didn't. Only you Tell him the truth. But I thought an ice pick might do the trick, so... I went to the ice machine to get one. Hmm. You're a size seven, I suppose. Um, yes, I am. Why? What did you see when you went to the ice machine? There was blood. A lot of it. Mm -hmm. Did you touch anything? I might have touched a few things. Just to figure out what had happened to Mr. Cruz. They're about to lock me up, bro. Of course you did. They're about to lock me up, Why bro. so many witnesses can't help but compromise the evidence is just beyond me. They, they locking me up, bro. 
anyway. What did you do after restoring the power? I took the elevator down to the lobby. That's where I called the police. Do you remember what you said to the operator? The exact words? I... No, I'm afraid I don't. You said there's a man dead. He's been murdered. That's possible. What makes you so sure it was murder? Oh, I might gotta lie here, bro. <laughs> but but I didn't throw away the pictures. I didn't throw away the pictures of uh of me snooping around the place. So I, I might just gotta tell them the truth and be like, bro, I've been snooping around and I seen like some shit. Oh my gosh, bro. Second playthrough, I'm not touching shit. Second playthrough, I'm not touching shit, bro. I, I'm not touching shit in that ice room. I've been snooping around the guests' rooms. <laughs> I didn't think you'd admit it. You knew already? We found pictures of you snooping around. See? Oh. See? Oh. See? Now, unless you want me to arrest you for violating your guests' privacy, I suggest you I didn't throw the pictures away. That's know. why. All right. Let's start with the victim's wife, Marcella Cruz. Apparently, she left in quite a hurry this morning. What can you tell me about her? Marcella has an affair with another woman. She's having an affair, but it's not what you think. She's been in love with another woman since college. They've been apart for more than, than 10 years, and now they're... Yes, yes, I know all about Mrs. Cruz and Mrs. Beaumont's sexual deviance. Have you ever witnessed them engaging in immoral behavior? What do you mean? I'm asking if you've seen them being, you know, intimate. No, I haven't. No. And did you hear them discuss their deviant ways in front of Mrs. Beaumont's son, perhaps? Imagine what kind of effect such perversion can have on a young child. No, Look at bro. I didn't hear anything. Did you hear them express their hatred of men? Look at bro Did they flipping ever talk the script. Using violence against men. Did you hear them speak ill of Mr. Cruz? What are you trying to imply? That Mrs. Taking a Cruz stand on that, bro, because I'm, her husband you know what I'm saying, I'm with Beth. Men? I've seen it before from lesbians. Oh, this has nothing to do with hate. It's about love. Not that you'd understand. Oh, and you think you do? Then please, enlighten me. She's brave enough to be with the one she loves. That doesn't make her a criminal. That doesn't mean she killed her husband. I'm starting to worry you may be one of them, Miss Roy, since you're so eager to defend and these And I demons. worry about your ability to do your job, Detective, since you seem to be such a- Enough! Let's go! One more word, just one more word, and you'll be spending the rest of your Lock life- Lock in, bro. Her cell. ass snapping. Look at this nigga, bro. Now get the hell out of here. I've had enough of you. Exactly. Let me go. Bro, man, because I got the bitches, bro, like- He mad cause he can't get no hugs, bruh. Bernard was strangely chipper on the phone. That can't be a good thing. The atmosphere is so different in here. Will it ever feel like it used to? Let's go see what Bernard wants. It'll probably be a while before the hotel reopens. Without Eugene, the lobby will be a swimming pool by the end of the month. I'm not getting nobody fired next round either, bro. My boy Eugene, I'm gonna clean up his mess. What the fuck Bernard off is at, bro? Oh, that's the elevator. Manager's office. I gotta go to the janitor's joint. I'll need a mop to clean the puddle. With all the leaks, I'm sure there's one nearby. Yeah, where is it? Where's the elevator? You go a bucket. I said, where's the elevator? Where's the mop? Oh, there you go. Nah, next playthrough, bro. We not touching no evidence, bro. And I'm keeping all my, I'm keeping all my homies free. I have to clean the puddle by Bernard's office. She got a Nautica shirt on. 
Okay. What you know about that? Ugh, go to hell. Beth. Hey, are you okay? I'm out of a job. But other than that, yeah, Is he firing people? Peachy. What? No, I... I hope you're luckier than I am. Come join me when he's done with you, all right? I'll be... Questioning my life choices on the mezzanine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That slow walk-off is crazy. Ah, Miss Roy. Come in. I suppose you know why you're here? I would guess it has something to do with the murder. Well, tell us more of you know about his about brother that. and he's a punk. <laughs> We've been getting a lot of press lately, and not the good kind. I wouldn't expect you to understand the position I'm in, but I assure you, it's quite uncomfortable to have one's life's work blown away like that. Look at him, bro, worried about himself. All thanks to some sexual deviance and a nut job. <laughs> it's obvious to me now that I haven't been firm enough. For guests of such morals to be comfortable booking a few nights here and and, and committing such a horrid act <sighs> no, things need to change this means elevating our standards to the highest possible level and it starts with the people working here it starts with you with me yes from what i've heard you've been quite the exemplary maid lately clean rooms satisfied guests i take my job very seriously sir as you should We'll see for the future, but for now, you'll be allowed to continue working here. Thank you. I'm not done. The police have finished their investigation and left a mess on the fifth floor. I want you to clean it up. You want me to go back there? Yes. Why not? I yes. Why not? I found a dead body on that floor. I, I'm not going back. I'll make this simple for you. If you don't do it, you're fired. You can't fire me. The fuck, because, bro? Because I quit. <laughs> sure. I fire you, you quit. It's all the same to me. Just make sure to empty your locker before the end of the month. That'll be all. Like, bro, you're not finna hold me like that, bro. Hey, what a week. <laughs> yeah. So, what did Bernard want with you? Well, he was being kind of a jerk, so I quit. You what? I quit. I figured there was no point in staying if you were leaving. I appreciate the solidarity, but you really didn't. That's have not to why. Do That's not really why I quit, but. For the best. Did Bernard say why he was firing you? Ugh. He was going on and on about keeping deviants out of the hotel. So, huh, I may have lost my cool a little. A little? I told him I was one of those deviants he was so afraid of. He froze for a moment, then showed me the door. Well... I'm not one bit worried about you. I know you'll be just fine. Yeah, I do have a cat-like ability to land on my feet. And think of all the good times you'll have away from Bernard. Mm, all this annoying him. He turns into a particular shade of red that only I can get out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right. It's time for new challenges. I could see myself owning my own establishment. One that caters to the right kind of crowd. Believe it or not, I do enjoy the company of people. Just not, you know, the stuck-up, entitled clientele of this prestigious hotel. Of but course. Maybe if I were behind the counter of, say, a bar instead of a reception desk. <sighs> I don't know. Is that silly? Not at no, all. No, it's not. In fact, you'd be perfect for it. You're the most charming person I know. Thank you. I'm really 
be glad you're in my life. Me too. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Can I, um, kiss you? Yes. I thought you never asked. Hmm. Hmm. We locked in, and we gotta win out of this. We got our girl. <laughs> we got our girl. Shout out to Beth and Sophie. You and your acolyte kiss. I don't want to lie like Anne and Marcia. I've been thinking about Anne and Marcella a lot. Should I be jealous? No, not in that way. I've been thinking about what they went through. How they had to lie and pretend. Day after day. How they had to live someone else's life for ten years. Before they could finally be with each other. I... I don't think I could do that. Well, I have good news for you, Bean. Times are changing. Mm. It's already started elsewhere. And it will get here, eventually. One day, all the Annes and Marcellas of the world will live happily together, and no one will give a damn. I really hope that's true. It will be. Let's go. Let's go, bro. Man, that's it. W game, bro. I can only imagine how the other end this can be. I mean, I know they're gonna be pretty straightforward, but if we lie to the cop, if we if we don't touch none of the evidence, three conspirators charged in Clarington murder case. Look, it is Paul. He alive. I told you, Paul. Who this? Is that Paul? Paul, Marcella, and uh. And all got arrested. That's Lindsey Franklin. That's the guy that Paul was in love with. That's, the, that's Marcella and Anne right there. All right, I'm gonna run this back. I'm gonna run this back, not tonight, but I'm gonna run this back this weekend, probably on Friday. And we're gonna keep them free. We're not gonna get accused for nothing and everybody gonna keep their jobs. And we'll do it with Andrew instead of uh, Beth this time. VIP only. Look at this dude. We need him to get fired or something like that to happen. We need something bad to happen to that guy. We need to figure out a way to get something bad to happen to him. He chose to stand up for Bernard and quit, but now you have no job. Sophie's choice. Oh, these are my bills and shit. Oh, shit. We opened a bar. We open a bar together. Beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, bruh. They go to credits, hey. No, I just accidentally cleared my freaking go SLR, bro. Well, I can't put my, oh yeah, I got this applause. I got the back of applause. Hey, bro, that was a fire game. That was a fire game for sure. So these, this is like, this showing you who you can choose like to end the game with. So we, we knocked the night out with Beth. I'ma come back, we are gonna run this bad Friday. This is a great game, bro. If y'all, like, even though y'all see me play it, you obviously see how, like, if you do something different, like the slightest different, like if I threw away the pictures, that shit would have been completely different at the end. Or like, you know, just like little shit like that. So this bid we made, bro, that shit was so fun. We gonna play it again on Friday though, cause I think I can get a different ending. So I'ma play it again on Friday. That shit is crazy, bro. Stato! 